Welcome to KEQ, Equilibrium Constant. We know that when a reaction is at equilibrium, that a couple things are true. That the concentration of products and reactants are constant, so the concentration of reactants and the concentration of products, these two amounts are constant. And what's more interesting is that no matter how much reactant or product, no matter what those initial concentrations are in the reaction, that at equilibrium, there's always going to be the same relative amount of reactant and product. And we saw that at the end of the last video. And that idea of the product and reactant concentrations always having the same relative amounts towards each other at equilibrium, that came up in the 19th century based on experimental evidence. But we can actually see where it comes from just based on what we've talked about so far. So to see that, let's take a look at the law of mass action. And we'll start with looking at this from the perspective of a single step or elementary reaction. So that means something like A plus B yields AB. So a single step elementary reaction. Uh, this reaction is not reversible, so we're not going to deal with that. But we know that the rate for this is based on some constant, the specific rate constant, times the concentration of the reactants, A and B. And remember, the reason we have this expression is that the law of mass action tells us that the rate is going to be proportional, so that's that K, it's going to be proportional to the product, so multiplying, the concentrations of the reacting particles. Keeping that in mind, let's now look at the law of mass action for an equilibrium situation. That means we have a reaction that's reversible. So here we have a reversible reaction, and we just said that the law of mass action tells us that the rate of reaction is proportional to the concentration of the reacting particles or the reacting substances. So we're going to be able to apply it to this reversible reaction, but the only thing that's going to be different is that we have to account for the fact that A and B are not the only reacting substances. C and D also react together to form A and B again. So that's going to be the difference when considering this case of the reversible reaction. Now let's add a little bit to this equation. We'll put in some coefficients here. So let's say that this reaction is really x moles of A plus y moles of B yields m moles of C and n moles of D. These are going to be our coefficients for this reaction. Now to start us off, we're going to first consider the forward reaction and then the reverse reaction. We're going to deal with this in two pieces. So for the forward reaction, A and B forming C and D, we can come up with a rate expression similar to what we did for the single step reaction. So the rate of the forward is going to be equal to some constant, specific rate constant, K1, times the concentration of A to the X power, times the concentration of B to the Y power. And this is what we saw with rate laws. This is just a simple rate law for the forward reaction. We're going to do the same thing for the reverse reaction. The rate of the reverse reaction is going to be equal to a different specific rate, because it's a different reaction, times the concentration of those reacting particles. So the concentration of C to the M power, and D to the N power. Now here's where equilibrium becomes pretty cool. We know that at equilibrium, by definition, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So this rate here that we just came up with has to be equal to this rate at equilibrium. Therefore, I can take this expression and set it equal to this expression. And if I do that, I'm going to get something like this. And from here, I can use some algebra to bring the constants to one side and all the concentrations of particles to the other side. So if I do K1 over K2, which is just a convention, we always do K1 over K2 for this, that's going to be equal to the concentration of C to the M power times the concentration of D to the N power divided by the concentration of A to the X power and the concentration of B to the Y power. And then we actually replace this K1 over K2, we replace that with a large K. We call it KEQ. So let's replace that, and we'll write KEQ in its place. And KEQ is the equilibrium constant. And if we look at the right side of the equation, we can essentially see that this is a ratio between the products on top and reactants on the bottom. So this is a ratio between products and reactants, and the fact that KEQ, the equilibrium constant, is a constant means that there is a constant ratio between products and reactants at equilibrium. And that's going to be a really powerful idea for us. 
And before we keep going to talk about how we can use this idea of KEQ, let's talk a little bit about what it is. So first of all, every reaction that goes to equilibrium has an equilibrium constant. And these KEQs for all sorts of different reactions have been determined experimentally. And you can look them up in various data tables. Secondly, this whole expression we just came up with, this KEQ equals you know, the concentration of products or the concentration of reactants, this is called the mass action expression, or more generally the equilibrium expression. But both of those two names are used to describe this, mass action expression and equilibrium expression. And the last note I want to make about notation is that KEQ itself is a general term for the equilibrium constant. What I actually wrote here is something more specific called KC, which simply means it's the equilibrium constant in terms of concentration. You might also come across, in some cases, KP, which is the same thing, except that instead of concentrations of A, B, C, and D, the P means you're looking at the partial pressures. So the pressure of A, the pressure of B, the pressure of C, and the pressure of D. It's a little bit different, but it gives you the same meaning. For this class, though, we're just going to talk about it as KEQ, and they're always going to be in terms of concentration. So for this class, KEQ is going to be used interchangeably with KC. And I'll stick with talking about it as KEQ. So this is the general form of the expression. KEQ equals this arrangement of products over reactants. Let's see how we can write equilibrium expressions for actual reactions. We'll put our general form up here in the corner for reference. KEQ equals the concentration of each product multiplied together over the concentration of each reactant multiplied together. Now the first thing I'm going to say is that this general expression we have for the format of the equilibrium expression assumes that there are two products, C and D, and two reactants, A and B. If I have more or less than that in my actual reaction, I just add a letter or take away a letter. So let's write the expression for this first reaction. So the KEQ for the synthesis reaction between hydrogen gas and iodine gas to form hydrogen iodide is going to look like this. I'm going to have the concentration of HI gas on top, because that's my product. And I'm going to raise it to the second power because it has a coefficient of 2 in front of it. On the bottom of this expression, I'm going to have my reactants, so the concentration of H2 and the concentration of I2 multiplied with each other. There is no exponent written because they both have a coefficient of 1, and we don't write the exponent of 1. For the second reaction, this one looks different because we have some ions that are in aqueous solution. And this reaction is a dissociation of hydrofluoric acid, HF. So KEQ is going to be equal to the ions that are a product of that dissociation, H plus times F minus, over the concentration of hydrofluoric acid. In this case, I had two products and only one reactant. And nothing had a coefficient, so nothing is raised to a particular power. They're all powers of one. Now I want to bring something to your attention here. For the first reaction and the second reaction right here, this phases are all the same throughout the entire reaction. Gas, 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 and this one, they're all aqueous. We would say that these reactions are in homogeneous equilibrium. It's homogeneous because every reactant and product, all the participating substances, are in the same phase. That's going to be noticeably different from the third reaction down here, which shows a solid and two substances that are aqueous. So this third one is going to be called a heterogeneous equilibrium. And before I write the equilibrium expression for this last reaction, we have to know how to deal with a solid participant in the reaction. And the reason is different is because all of these symbols that we're using here represent the concentration of a reactant or a product. The problem with solids and liquids too, so solids and liquids, is that their concentrations never change. I mean, it's impossible if you think about it. A solid has a certain number of particles, and they take up a certain fixed volume. If you take away particles, you also take away the volume. So their concentration can never change. And it's the same thing with liquids. Because those states have a fixed volume that's based on the number of particles, they can never have a different concentration. Their concentration can never change. The result of that is that we never write solids and liquids into the KEQ expression because they are constants. And we just consider them as being rolled into this overall K constant. So when I write the equilibrium expression for this, I'm going to pretend that I have no reactant particles. So my fraction isn't going to be really a fraction here. It's just going to be the concentration of Pb2 plus ions times the concentration of Cl minus ions 
to the second power. And this is really just over 1 because I'm not considering any reactants. So we don't really write the 1 there, obviously. And it's just Keq equals a concentration of Pb times a concentration of Cl squared. Now we don't just write these expressions to have fun writing out formulas. You can actually use these because all of these quantities are simply concentrations. And you can measure concentrations in the lab. So if you were to carry out a reaction and it reaches equilibrium, you can measure these concentrations, plug them in, and find out the equilibrium constant for that reaction. And that can be a very small number, or it can be a very big number, or it could be somewhere in between. But essentially, we need to know how to interpret the size of the KEQ, or how to interpret the value of KEQ. And there's essentially three cases. In the first case, KEQ is very large, so significantly greater than 1. If KEQ is significantly larger than 1, that means that at equilibrium, there's significantly more product than reactant. And that should make sense because our expression is a concentration of product over the concentration of reactant. So the only way for this expression to be significantly greater than 1, or to be a very large number, is if the numerator, the top of this fraction, is significantly larger than the bottom, or the denominator. And that would tell us that at equilibrium, there's a lot more product than reactant, to the point where we could probably say that it goes to completion. The second case, then, would be Keq is equal to 1, or equal to or around 1. And if this is the case, that means that the top of this fraction and the bottom of this fraction are equal to each other, or very close to each other. And we could say that this reaction sort of goes halfway, or that the amount of product is going to be about equal to the amount of reactant. And so the last case would be when Keq is significantly less than 1. And if this is the case, the reaction barely starts. There's so little product formed that this is a very small number. An example of a reaction that has a very small Keq is a reaction of nitrogen gas with oxygen gas to form two NO molecules. This reaction has a Keq of 1 times 10 to the negative 25th. So a really, really small number, which means this reaction barely happens in the forward direction, which is a really good thing because our atmosphere is made up of nitrogen gas and oxygen gas as the two major components. And if these two things reacted together to produce something else, that would pretty rapidly change our atmosphere. And we'd be out of luck when it came to breathing. That wraps up our lesson on KEQ, the equilibrium constant. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.